Hi there, I'm Dave Horton. I'm the creator of Gem Bones, the open source CPaaS for service providers. In previous videos, I've showed you how to plug in your carriers to Gem Bones so that you can place and receive calls over your SIP trunks. But you can also register SIP phones and WebRTC clients as well and make or receive calls to those devices. In this video, I'll show you how to handle registrations from SIP clients and some of the options that you have in routing calls from your SIP clients to your applications. Now, be forewarned, we do this quite a bit differently in Jambones than the other CPaaS providers. Because in most CPaaS systems, you upload your SIP credentials, that is your database of usernames and passwords, to the CPaaS provider, where you enter them into their portal. Either way, the CPaaS provider holds those credentials in their database. And hopefully, they keep that data secure and it never gets hacked or otherwise exposed, since that could result in a massive headache for you, not to mention costly fraud charges. We don't think that sounds quite right. On Jambones, the platform never has access to your SIP credentials. That's your private information. We're providing you a service, but we don't need you to share that information with us, and we don't want you to. It's better and safer for you to keep that information contained within your own organization, not spreading it around to third-party servers where you can't audit, track, or control where it's gone. Well then, what happens when one of your devices attempts to register with the platform? We reach out to your application via a webhook that you provision, and you control the decision about whether to allow the registration or the call attempt. We'll give you all the information presented by the calling device, and you'll authenticate the user based on that information. In this transaction, the user's password is never exposed to Jambones. You may wonder about the overhead of webhooks for devices that may be constantly registering. Don't worry. When you authenticate a device, you'll also indicate the duration that you want to grant the device. And during that period of time, we'll cache the registration and we'll avoid reaching out to you again. The best way to see all this is to, well, see all this in action. So let's get started. All right, let's use the Create Jambones app to scaffold us out an application. I run it without any parameters, we just get the help text here so we can see we can generate certain scenarios and it'll generate a code snippet for us. In our case, we're interested in authenticating SIP devices. And once we authenticate, we'll make an app that sends an inbound call to it, so we want um, a dial web callback as well. So, let's uh, do a couple scenarios. Auth and dial, I'm just gonna call it my app. All right, let's have a look at it in our code editor. Again, we've got a basic app scaffolded out for us. This is all boilerplate. If we go down and look at our endpoints, we've got an endpoint created for route. Let's have a look at the code. So as the comment says, in this example, it's gonna be a simple example, we need a database to keep our credentials. We're gonna use a simple in-memory database here, but you can use any sort of database that you want, or even something like Google Sheets to keep your credentials, which I've used in the past for test environments. We get the post with a request, and then we're gonna perform digest authentication to verify this user. So we're gonna get a username in a realm, we need to look up the password, do a bit of digest authentication to validate the response payload that came in the authorize header and see if they're the same. Now, all of that might sound complicated, but don't worry, there's code snippets here for you to steal and take and use in your own code. Namely, this calculate response, which if we take a look is over in uh, the utils. So here is where we're doing some, the digest authentication as it's spelled out in the RFC. So this is great code you can take and build into your own application if you don't want to use Node.js directly. But back over here in the auth, we're going to get a, a realm, SIP realm, 
zip domain, we're going to get a username. It's then on us to look up the users based on that, or the user. If we don't find one, we're going to return a status of fail. Now notice that in all cases we're returning a 200 OK with a JSON payload. <clears throat> That's what we want to do. We only want to return an HTTP error code if there was an error of some kind, actually, you know, a 500 internal server error or something. So always return a 200 with a JSON payload. And the key thing is the status. It's either fail or it's success. So here we're rejecting it because there was no such uh, realm. If we find the realm, then we're going to look up the username. Again, here we didn't find that user in that realm. If we did find him, then we're going to take that password. We're going to calculate our hash and we're going to compare it to the hash in the authorization header. And if it's OK, we're simply going to return a JSON payload status OK. Otherwise, the password didn't match, and again, we return a status of fail. That's it. That's all that's really required. That's all that we're, that we're going to do. Now, let's have a look at something else. This, to run this application, we need to provide some credentials. We need to provide our account SID. We're going to use an API key. Uh, we need the base URL, which I'm testing against the jambones.us hosted platform. And we need our webhook secret so that we can validate the signature of the incoming post and, and verify that it came from Jambones. So let's get that information that we're going to need. Simply going to switch over into our portal here. Get the account SID right here of my account. And copy that in. Oops. Copy that in. I'm going to get an API key. Base URL is https colon slash slash jambones.us. And finally, the webhook secret. HTTP password and username is if I want to do HTTP basic auth, which I'm not going to do, so I'll leave those just like that. Okay, so we've configured the application. Oh, let's also have a look at the database. So in our case, as I say, we've got a simple in-memory database. So here we are, got uh, an object keyed by domains and then users in those domains that are also keys to passwords. Now in my case, my domain is davh.sip.jambones.us. So I'm going to change that to davh.sip.jambones.us. And we'll just have one user that we'll use, Joe, at foobarbasil. With that, our webhook application is ready to go. So let's start it up. OK, it's running and it's uh, listening. Now, we need to expose this to the internet. I'm going to use ngrok here in this case, just to make it simple, ngrok HTTP 3000. So now I'm listening on port 3000, and I've got a nice little URL that I can use. Where am I going to put that? I'm going to put it back over here as my registration webhook. So this is the webhook that's called when SIP users attempt to authenticate to the system or attempt to register to the system. I don't have a webhook, so I'm going to put one in. It's going to be in ngrok.io slash auth because auth is the path in the application. All right, that's it. Let's see if we can get our account to validate. So here we are. I've got Bria. My domain is DaveH. We were going to use user ID Joe. Password foo bar Basil. He hasn't been able to authenticate before. And now we'll see how it goes. Okay, he's green. He's all set to go. So authentication worked. And if we go back over here, we can see I got a post to my auth hook and it returned a 200 OK. We can see here, SIP user successfully authenticated. And you can see all the information that came down in that post. So we're good. This user is now online. We can send calls to him. So actually, let's go ahead and do that. To do that, though, one more change in our application. We need to create a simple application for calls. Um, 
Actually, we're gonna change the code for that. Let's go back over here. We have an endpoint where we dial out to time. Let's create a new endpoint called dial user to dial to a registered SIP user. So it's a lot like this one, except the target type is not gonna be phone, now it's gonna be user. And when we send to a user, we send by name, by the fully qualified name, the address of record, which in this case will be, well, we'll just put Joe at tbh.sip.jambones.us. Um, and that's it, so very simple application, dialing to a registered user. And we'll need to add that route. Dial user, dial user. We've created a little application. We're just going to restart. And back over here, let's wire up that application. Let's create a new application, dial user to get that um, URL again here, whoops. And the route that I just created, of course, was dial user, so we'll do that. It's so called status route in there. And we're good to go. So we have a dial user. Um, let's, so I'm gonna connect it to my Twilio gateway. So all incoming calls from Twilio, which don't have an application right now, will go to the dial user application. Okay, now I'm set, and any calls that I make um, that come in on the Twilio Gateway should go to my registered user. Let's try it out. Test test. Well, there you go. We created an application in just a few minutes that handles registers from SIP devices and then allows us to dial out to those SIP devices. All right, I just showed you how to handle SIP devices and endpoints and some of the options for routing calls from them to your applications. If you have any questions, please email us at support at jambones.org or just hit me up directly at davh at jambones.org. That's it for now. I'll see you next time, and you have a great day.